good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever it is, wherever you are. Welcome back to another video. As you saw from the title of the video, we are going to be working on the M. So I finally managed to find our long lost partner in hiding. And he's been over here the whole time. Would you look at it? Here I am. Oh my gosh, what's going on, brother I man? Am. I'm just looking at it. It's them. been a while. <laughs> I'm just looking For all of you guys who are wondering where he was, he's been here the whole time. <laughs> That's the reason why you haven't seen him in the other videos. He's been really trying to do more and he's had some things going on. Um, but now he's back and uh, he's ready to film again, right? I hope. Yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> he's doing the intro. I'm just doing the work. <laughs> here I am. <laughs> I'm just glad we found the goat. All right. So, as you saw from the thumbnail in the video, we are going to be doing our oil change. Okay, so I talked to the GOAT. He recommended that I go with FCP Euro. Not only that, he, <laughs> he recommended that I go with their oil change kit. So, that's funny, because I like his little stamp of approval. <laughs> so I'll switch over here. So, ugh. These E9X N3s are a big gas guzzler. How many how many uh, quarts of oil we got? Gas guzzler? Or oil guzzler? Oil. All right, take two. <laughs> Apparently, well they are, they are gas guzzlers. <laughs> Apparently, these E9X, oh my gosh, it's gonna be a long night. Yeah, for him, I don't know what the hell is wrong with Jamal. I'm tired, what trying to say? Man. They don't really uh, guzzle oil either. If this uh, engine was guzzling oil, you'd have a serious problem. They just take a lot of oil. They take a lot of oil. <clears throat> Correct, so. How many quarts of oil? Talk anywhere between you. eight and a half and nine. It depends on um, how finicky your uh, M3 is, but the rule of thumb is nine. Uh, as we're performing the oil change, I'll get into the, I don't wanna say correct way, right? Cause I mean, if you change your oil and everything's fine, everything's fine, but I'll walk you through the proper procedures. There you go. There it is. Of uh, how to change this specific oil because when BMW made this M3, it was more like a, a WTF because nothing was like anything else. So I'll walk you through the proper procedures of how to change this oil, how you should, doesn't mean that's how you have to do it, but how it's supposed to be performed and then we'll go from there, so. <laughs> so basically I ordered the kit from FCP Euro. I think it came out to like 140 bucks ship. They sent me nine quarts of oil, sent a nice little filter right here. And then um, there's some other smaller things that came along with it that you guys will see later on in the video. <laughs> So what else I wanted to do after this oil change is I kind of wanted to go through and assess whatever little, I don't know, damages I may have or whatever little mishaps I may have since the Tennessee trip that we took to Tail of the Dragon. And if there's nothing here, then great. I don't think there's anything crazy going on, but I just want to throw the car up on the lift and let's just take a look at everything and see what we got going on as well after that. So uh, that being said, let's start the oil change. Yeah, let's start. I mean. You're the boss, I'm just the worker, right? I'm just here to work, <laughs> you know? That's all I'm here for, I don't understand. Well, he works, all he does is work, 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 that's work. It. That's it, I literally got off of work today and then now here I am at eight, whatever o'clock. Oh, it's nine. No, nine o'clock at night working Very some more, nine. so. Pray for me in the comment section. Send me your best regards, yeah, whatever. No, 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 nobody told you, this. nobody yeah, told man. you. <laughs> no, he harassed me. He's been harassing me for weeks, so. Okay, so. Side note, the reason why I've been harassing him is because I want you guys to understand the proper procedures of what goes on with doing things like this. Um, not only that, I know that there's a lot of people on, you know, that watch a video on YouTube and they're like, okay, well I can just do this in my garage. You may be able to, but at the same time, there may be some things that you miss that you won't be able to watch in a video like this. So that's the reason why I've been harassing this guy right here because obviously he's a goat, you know? Let's get this thing started, man. God dang. Cut the clip. Not you. Oh, wait, not you. Mm -hmm. So for those that maybe have just bought an E9X M3 and are just 
they're thinking about doing a DIY themselves or maybe you guys are looking to get one and you don't really know how. Um, can you just explain real quick, like this little process on how to do it, what to do, um, and things kind of to look out for while we're waiting for this oil to drain out? <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I mean to start off, if you're trying to change your own oil at home, uh, the first things you want to do while the car is still on the floor is um, take off the oil filter cap and you also want to remove the oil filter itself. That way, when you come down here and you break open both oil drain plugs, you have complete flow through the engine, all the air up top pushes all the oil down gravity essentially, so that every way, that way everything drains out completely. And then when you come down here to the bottom, you're gonna have two number six Allens. If you have it, you can put it on a socket or if you have an Allen wrench, they're both number sixes. They look like so. There's gonna be one in the back. This is number one. There's gonna be one in the front. As you guys already saw, that's number two. You always drain number one first, then you go to drain number two as number one is draining. And then while they're both draining, now this is again the proper procedure. You're supposed to let them both drain for mandatory two minutes uh, so from the point of where we're at right now where this is kind of like a drip uh, you want to let this go for about two minutes uh, in order to ensure that majority of and or if not all the oil has left the engine yeah uh, before you do your oil change because you don't want to have too much you don't want to have too less so um, why is one i mean obviously you can go numerical order but <laughs> why is that why do you do one before two yeah no it's just a baffled oil pan so it's like this, essentially. So you have Got your upper you. and your lower section for purposes of oil and not oil consumption, but um, yeah. for the pickup for the yep. oil itself, so that it doesn't it's not starvation. New V8s have an upper and a lower section of the oil pan, but it's like literally an upper and then like a lower. Yeah. So this just had like a you know baffled. It was just kind of like this. So that's the only reasons uh, why you drain this one first because it's a bigger one, and then you drain that one afterwards. If you don't drain that one afterwards, you're gonna have a lot of excess oil, and then. Your car's gonna be freaking out saying that you need to add oil when you actually have too much oil. Yeah. So on and so forth. So it's very Makes important sense. to make sure that you drain both of them uh, when doing this. So we let it drain for two minutes and then. Um... And then we'll plug them back up and then we'll just fill the engine back up with oil. And then I'll explain more when we uh, lower the car back down on what you're supposed to do at that point when you're adding the oil. All right, say less. Is there like a certain um, newton meters of torque? For that? There is. Uh, Can't tell you off the top of my head. <laughs> when you've done enough oil changes, you know what tight is. If that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> just go tight, not too tight, guys. When it stops spinning on its own, just give her a little ug and that's it. Nothing crazy. So don't keep tightening until it starts spinning again. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. And if it starts spinning again, well. Well, you're about to get a very expensive it. bill. Yeah. <laughs> Clean those up. Turn the car off and turn it back on again. Wow. Don't listen to what Jamal's telling you to do. <laughs> to sabotage these fools. <laughs> <laughs> That's all cleaned up. Let's move back to the top. All right, well, before we go up, I wanted to kind of like do like a little overlook and see what may have happened if anything did happen during the tail. I mean, it's always good to, um, you know, to check your car while you have an opportunity to put it up on a lift. Honestly, so when I came back, first thing I checked was the brakes. Brakes were fried. I knew the brakes were fried probably on day three at the tail. Um, so I needed to make sure that I changed them out. Don't go blind. Oh, no. Come on now. You know what kind of, if you only knew the stuff that dropped in my eyes on a daily basis. I believe it. This is child's play. I, I believe it. <laughs> Just a little pepper. Mm -hmm. um, so I changed the brakes already. I changed those out of my garage not too long ago. Um, I have been uh, do like a little check and see what he thinks of my work. And then uh, <laughs> tires look good. The tires actually, not only did they hold up very well at the tail, they held up very well at the tail in the rain, in the dry, and they lasted very long. I think it was maybe to Tennessee, I think it was say 10 hours to get there. So drove up there, drove very hard, multiple hundreds of miles for let's say three days minimum, and then drove back another 10 hours. So this car did very well. The tires held up very well. And I'm very proud of these Pilot Sport 4S. That's about it. Ben, did you, did you see anything? No, Other I mean, than, um, my leaky boy up here that we already talked about. <laughs> we already talked about that. I was just cleaning it just to see how fast it comes back. Yeah. Um, no, I mean, I really didn't see anything. Not really gonna get any sort of like damage when taking your car to the tail of the dragon unless you hit something. 
in the road or anything like that. I mean, <clears throat> the only thing you should look for after a trip like that is make sure you have no leaks that might have started, you know, uh, after the trip. Yeah. And you, know, you want to do a pre-inspection before you go and you want to do an inspection afterwards just to make sure everything looks uh, the same, normal. Right. All right, but yeah, you're just checking brakes and tires at that point. Make sure your tires aren't bald. Make sure you have no nails, no debris. Uh, make sure you still have brake pads left if you take your sensors out. Um, you might need pads and rotors depending on how hard you got on the brakes. Uh, definitely need to change out your brake fluid because the hotter you get your brake fluid for trips like that and for you know doing the tail and driving off fast and stopping hard like that, moisture builds up in your brake system. And if you don't know, uh, water and brake fluid do not get along. It's a very uh, crazy chemical reaction. So you want to try to get as much of that moisture out of your uh, brake system uh, as possible if you got your brakes that hot. Um, so just things like that, but I mean, other than that, tires still look good. Yeah, they do. Uh, Jamal already changed out his brakes, like like he said. There doesn't yeah. appear to be, you know, any debris uh, anywhere that he may have hit that signs of something being damaged underneath the vehicle, um, other than what, what was already there previously, which is this little thingy right here, but that doesn't matter. So other than that, yeah. That's a jacking point, correct? Yeah, it's a jack point, yeah. Is that the technical terminology? Yeah, well. Fair enough. Lift Close point. Enough. Lift, lift point. point. So. Okay. Yeah. Everything looks good down here. Yeah, no, the car treated me really good. Um, definitely would do that trip again. Can't wait to do it again. And that's it. Let's bring the uh, let's bring the car down and finish out this oil change. <clears throat> All right, guys. So um, now we're back on top. Uh, the car is on the ground. So now we're just going to remove our O-ring that goes around our filter here. Take that off with some sort of pick or flathead screwdriver. The kit <clears throat> that you buy, doesn't matter whether you go to AutoZone, Advance, or you get it from FCP. Uh, the oil filter itself is gonna have a new uh, gasket that you put around. You just take some of the oil that's on your glove and wipe it around the uh, gasket that seals it itself, just to ensure that when you're spinning it on, it doesn't tear it. There's also another little gasket up here. Um, this one is black. And usually when it's black, it's a good indicator that uh, the filter that was in the car previously um, was not an OEM one. Just because BMW uses green little uh, gaskets at the top of all their filters. It's very difficult to remove because of how small it is. So that's the easy way for you guys to tell whether somebody used a BMW OEM gasket versus an aftermarket, right. the color. Correct, it pops right off. I have an OEM one here, right here. Let's pop that bad boy on. Call it a day. Yeah, I can actually see that it is green. Yeah, it's green. Yeah. Fair enough. All right. And then, uh, either way, <clears throat> this has a date on it, 0321. That's when this filter was made. Not that it really matters, but just for your guys' knowledge. Uh, being that this filter didn't come from BMW, uh, it's technically a lot of, not an OEM filter. Technically, uh, right, but FCP, you're all blast. But but go go ahead, do it. Do it man, do it. man filters are who produce BMW filters. They just don't say man on them. They just say BMW. So it's a man filter. Um, man makes the filters for BMW. So it's technically OEM. Oh yeah, it doesn't have a BMW stamp on it. So yeah, and then once you put your new gasket on the bottom, you put your filter in, and you put your new little uh, gasket, little ring here at the top. <clears throat> you reinsert your filter. And then you tighten it back down. I'm gonna go ahead now and I'm gonna open up all the oil here. And I'm going to- Ooh, that's a big boy. <laughs> I'm gonna start adding it uh, to the vehicle. Tell them what oil I got, man. Do the little flex. He got uh, liquid molly, which is uh, highly <laughs> recommended. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what you want me to say. He got liquid molly, which is highly recommended. Uh, he got, like like you said, he got you the- You know, you from, might have uh, the, uh, the TJ Hunt boys and the- uh, the Adam LZ boys, you oh, know, with Valvoline? Valvoline and- Yeah, well, I mean, they get paid, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars to say, try Valvoline oil, you know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, I would say here, take Valvoline too at that point. <laughs> Fair enough. So, uh, he has the kit that's recommended from FCP Euro for his vehicle, right? Which is gonna be Liquid Molly 1060, because this vehicle does take some very thick oil, uh, as you can see here. SAE 1060. All right guys, so we're back up top. Um, I already put the filter back together and I've been adding oil. Now, when you order the oil change kit from Liquid Molly, I'm um, excuse me, from Liquid Molly. FCP Euro. FCP Euro, it's late. Uh, FCP Euro, you get Liquid Molly. They give you um, five containers of oil. 
Now it's very important to pay attention to the amount of oil that you're putting into your engine, right? Now this engine specifically takes nine quarts, US quarts of oil. So if you look at the bottom of these, it says 1.06 US quarts, right? Or one liter. So if you were to do the math on these, right? So far I've put in one big bottle and two small bottles. That's equaled up to 7.04 quarts. When I add this one, I'm going to be sitting right around 8.46. Now that's me doing the math. Now, mind you, again, this takes nine quarts. So I'm gonna be sitting at 8.46. That's almost eight and a half quarts after I add this bottle. And I'll still have one full bottle left over. So it's very important just to monitor how much oil you're actually adding. It's, you don't wanna put all of them in because at that point, you're gonna have way too much oil Overflow. in your engine. Exactly, you have way too much oil in your engine. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna add this one. <clears throat> and then again, I told you guys I was gonna show you the proper procedures. So after I add this one, I'm actually going to start the car with about eight, eight and a half quarts of oil. I'm not gonna drive it, I'm just gonna let it sit here and I'm gonna let it idle until it gets to about 70 degrees Celsius, which I can't tell you what that is in Fahrenheit, but 70 degrees Celsius is what BMW says to let the uh, engine get to. So once it reaches that uh, temperature, then we're gonna measure the actual engine oil itself. At that point, <clears throat> it'll either tell us to add, you know, a quart of oil or a half a quart of oil, and then we'll go ahead and add that and then we'll remeasure the system again. Uh, usually BMW wants you to uh, take it on a 30 minute test drive. Uh, if you guys ever measure your oil, it doesn't matter what year car you have, whether it be uh, F chassis or an E chassis, it'll tell you to drive the vehicle uh, for a certain, a certain distance to get the actual engine warm and then it'll tell you to remeasure um, your oil at that point. But we're just gonna let it sit here, we're gonna let it idle and then uh, we'll uh, check it again and add however much oil is needed and then go from there. So I'm just gonna clean this off and then we'll start the car up. Um, anything you wanna say? <clears throat> oh man, yeah, this. Oh no, I wasn't gonna, I mean, I'll go over that. No, um, just make sure you replace your uh, crush washers for both drain plugs on the bottom. Don't put, uh, don't double, uh, don't double them up. Remove the old one, put the new one. Uh, it's called a crush washer for a reason. It gets crushed, so it is a one-time use. So make sure you replace them. Um, again, just going back over what I said before, add the oil, make sure you're uh, calculating it properly so that you don't overfill it. Um, and you should have about, this much left if you guys can see that when it's all said and done just a little bit of extra for you for the for the ride home because it is a v8 so you are going to burn a little bit of oil over time um so you know you have this in your trunk just to dump in there real quick to your next oil change i mean yeah because we don't have a dipstick in these cars that we can just physically yeah pull no out. no no longer it's electronic um so we're past those days of the old dipstick <laughs> um but yeah but that's i guess why you're being as um as specific and precise as you're being. Yeah, I mean, it's supposed to be like this pretty much for every car, just to ensure that the oil level is uh, correctly filled before you give it back to the customer. But this car in particular, it, it, it gets very complex. BMW wants you to drive it, they want you to fill it this many quarts and then drive it and then come back, measure it, and then fill it with this many quarts, test and drive it. It's, it's the whole process. Um, but if you do it just how I showed you, you should be okay, Jamal is yeah. okay, add a little bit more oil. He's fine. Um, just to touch on this real quick, because this is a super long oil chain video. Uh, this cap right here, if your M3 has it, uh, that's pretty cool. Most people lose it and or throw it away. It actually does serve a purpose. Uh, we had somebody comment in the comment section on the, I don't even know what video it was. Uh, it was a video where we were inspecting the car. Um, <clears throat> but he commented on this and he was asking what it's actually for. Well, it's actually to prevent the oil filter housing itself, the actual cap from backing out of the, the housing. Um, for why it does that, nobody knows. It might be vibration, it might be um, the amount of pressure that the oil uh, filter cap is uh, under. Um, but this essentially locks around it and it prevents it from turning either way and it also prevents it from coming up. Um, and, then, and then the way to take it off is you see these little tabs down here, you pull out, you pull out, and then you pull up. Um, so that's a design pull out, that pull BMW- Pull out, and pull up. Yeah, pull out, pull out, and pull up. Um, that's a design that BMW made up and then the way you know it goes in correctly is there's a little arrow right here that says sensor. And that's gonna go straight down, pointing at the sensor right down here, right below your oil filter housing itself. So when you put it on, you just line that up, slide it in, and it slides right over. If you don't have this arrow lined up with that sensor down there that you guys can't probably probably can't see, uh, it won't go on, and you'll be trying to figure out why it won't go on, and well, that's why. <clears throat> so other than that, that's pretty much how you do an oil change on a, uh, E9X M3, pretty simple.
Well, wrap up the video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you guys stayed for the whole thing. If you guys did stay for the whole video, comment down below. We missed you, Ben. Um, we're gonna wrap up this video for sure. So if you guys stay for this whole video, understand that we are gonna be filming another video right after this. So peace out, that's it, we're tired. Next video.